What's up, guys? This is basically a little podcast breakdown segment of the Gray Zone Warfare map with a few people here. I hope you enjoy, and if you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's get into it. All right, guys, we're going to be doing a breakdown on the Gray Zone Warfare map. We have Fat Hands, Kusho, Skillet, and Timmy Tinders. We're just going to get straight into it here. All right, so we have base camp A, base camp B, base camp C. We've only really seen base camp B here. Our main focus is going to be on, is this a balanced map? How is PV PVP going to play out? And all the blank spaces on this map. Is this really a 42 kilometer map? A playable area or is there just dead space is this placeholders stuff like that the first thing I want to elaborate on is so you have the town here not very uh, good version this is the market everybody see this town now if you yeah. flip it a few degrees you have the market and then the back of the town over here this is the same town copy paste obviously same town, copy paste. How do y'all feel about that? Well, thanks for bringing that to light. Actually, I haven't noticed that before. It's a good point. Um, it'd be interesting if that's a map rendering thing where they've just done it for the map. Um, it'd be interesting to actually go in and explore and see if they are mirroring the other cities. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, I'm thinking they are pretty much mirroring uh, everything. Not so much as the full outskirts, but just the main town portion itself is what I feel because you can kind of see there's less vegetation out here compared to here, technically. Yeah. I mean, it. I don't know. I didn't copy paste side by side to really view it, but uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know how I feel about it. It's kind of good from a balancing point, point of view, but this takes out four squares here of like something that's identical so say you want to do pvp you'll know the town but it'll be completely identical playing field you know so we so were talking about this in the discord and something that was pointed out in rilo's videos he said uh he wasn't going to show the full map because of spoilers uh and ah. we all know how rilo is when it comes to uh uh, not leaking stuff, whereas other YouTubers do yeah. show the full map. Um, we had come to the conclusion that we do know that the, they said the map, they increased the size of the map to 42 kilometers squared. It, it originally wasn't 42 kilometers squared. And okay. this might be an older version of the map uh, that's not even going to be the same way that we, by the time we get to play the game. Yeah, that, I don't know. that's what I would imagine. It's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so from what I understand, and it has actually been confirmed that the build that the 20 players played is not the build that other creators and the general public will play um, for early access. It is going to be a new version of the game. So yeah. whether they have just done this map for, you know, that pre-alpha stage for the play test, um, you know, they have obviously not going to put in all that effort making all these new cities when they're just getting the pre-alpha for the actual mechanics of the game. I think before it's released as early access, I reckon you'll see a very big change to those villages. Yeah, that's what I would imagine. I'm just hoping they're not the same, but also balanced in a way. I mean, they, they said 150 minutes uh, missions on launch. I just... ah, I don't see how they would do 150 missions and you not have to go to the enemy factions, uh, opposing factions base, not enemy. Caught myself. So, yeah, no, I'm certain those more, those villages will change. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the villages will definitely change. Yeah, that My makes thing, sense. Why they're all the same is that they wanted all of the content creators to have roughly the same kind of experience. So I think they might have been trying. Not sure, but they might have put 48 people on the map. I'm not sure, and that might be it. But that's there, just yeah. me speculating. There was only 20 to play test. Devs could have been playing also or whatever, but uh, I thought they only had the uh, Nam Thaven uh, area. Like uh, from this, yeah, base camp. Right. Yeah, they my didn't bad, even have bad. up here. 
Yeah. No, well, as you alluded sure. to before, as you alluded to before, um, Rick watches all the videos. So Rick, when you're watching this, can you just comment down below? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that would <laughs> be awesome. Just let us know about these villages. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that they're not going to be the same. I mean, that would be insane. 100% it won't be the yeah, same. Uh, yeah. That would be insane. But uh, I guess let's shift a little bit of focus to... We'll, we'll save Ground Zero for last, guys. So if you want to watch our intake on Ground Zero, you got to stay to the end. Um, so Tiger Bay and PvP area with balancing. Obviously, to me, if I'm a player, I'm going to go to the places that's like not elsewhere on the map. So that that waterway down here, you know, that's kind of a ooh. let me go down here. You know, this is the only play with, place with water. There's no water up here with a you know, a river channel or whatever this is, big body of water, you know? And then you have a bay. Like, are you gonna bet a swim in gray zone? Are there any POIs out here, like a crashed boat, sunken ship, anything like that that they're gonna be bringing in? Just common stuff that uh comes to mind, you know? And uh, if they do expand on this game in the future, like, dude, I swear, I, dude, mods and stuff like that, and you know, they could do a DLC package, right, on release where, say, you could jump in a boat over here, a rib boat, and then you can go off to another island because we're on a what? A fucking island, right? Yep. So this has to be out to the open water here. And then you can go to a whole nother, like, mission area where it's like a PvP island or some shit, you know, just something crazy. Or like how they have the drug, the drug trade, right? How they have a possible warlord type enemy in here and they're running drugs who are they running drug uh drugs to right there's an airstrip they could run drugs out the airstrip but to where is it another island do you have a mission where you have to stop the plane from taking off or is there going to be a ship or a boat that you have to stop the boat from leaving and going to another island or something like that you know just there's a whole bunch of different possible scenarios that could come up with just having a bay here but um, before I got a little bit off subject with the PvP aspect, th this is like nothing from Nam Thaven up to Pa Lang. And Pa Lang's, which we're, we're saying if everything stays the, stay the same at this moment and doesn't change, Pa Lang to get to Bon Pei, which is to the left of Bon Pei, but you know, Fort Narth and we have YBL, that's pretty close distance compared to from here to here, and then we have Tiger Blade Bay right up close on them, you know what I mean? PvP is gonna be all over right here. But if you compare to over here, whoever's base camp C, if everything stays the same, I feel they would have a lot less PvP than from base camp A to base camp B, whoever's spawning here opposing factions. What are y'all thoughts? I yeah, so you also no, sorry, have you to realize that you also have Fort Nerith off Nerith off to your left. Yeah. Which I think there will be a good amount of uh missions that will take place in there. And I think that's gonna be all a very contested hotspot, because that yeah. is the only military fort or installation that I can see so far. So I think that base camp C is still going to be able to have PvP, base, base camp B. But right now, as it is, base camp B definitely has uh, two of the most interesting POIs very close to them. Yeah, and then you, you basically just brought up my other point. It's, dude, if if everything stays the same, like, dude, look at, look at Fort Narth, look at Tiger Bay, compared to Pa Lang's nothingness airfield, this could be a quarry with underground bunkers. I mean, uh, I don't know. Kind of looks like a quarry here. You know, uphill, mountainside, Hunter's Village, uh, Paradise, I mean. Looks like pretty much nothing. I mean, dude, Base Camp C literally only has Fort Nareth. Sawmill? I don't even want to talk about Sawmill. I can't even really see a building there. Obviously, there's looking like a building set here, but compared to the fort, dude... 
it yeah. really comes down to what the quest line is going to be though like yeah. the quest line might take you to some of those really small and they might be really good rewards for that quest line which is going to force people to go to those smaller pois um also i really like how dense the vegetation is staying true to southeast asia um i think because they said it's pp evp it's really going to give you that opportunity to tactically move and disengage from pvp if you don't want to um so even those more populated areas like tiger bay you can take alternative routes to get to the point where you're trying to go if you know what i mean yeah and that's a very valid point so they talked about monsoons and not being able to use certain routes compared to others is just ah I don't know, man. So I love that. My, my opinion is, so yeah, Tiger Bay and Fort Nareth do look like interesting POIs, but you're also harshly judging a book's bikes cover. Yeah. Sawmill, yeah, yeah. Hunter's Paradise, Midnight Sapphire, heck, Falang Airfield could be better in Fort Nareth. Uh, yeah. We don't know how that's going to be. Yeah, it's uh, how they label the loot, whether it's going to be high tier, maybe at Sawmill. Like, in the, you just never know what's going to be there, whether it's a small building or not. The level of loot might be different. Yeah, uh, the AI might be harder in some areas with better gear. Uh, exactly. On top of that, I mean, it, I think PvP is going to go all right. Uh, a Midnight Sapphire is, or bet I mean, between Base Camp C and Base Camp A, Midnight Sapphire is probably going to be one of the hot spots. Fort Nareth is probably going to be a hot spot, just like Tiger Bay. I would say that Base Camp B has an advantage to Tiger Bay over Base Camp A. Uh, yeah. I'd honestly say Base Camp A is worse off than uh, Base Camp C, just because it, it's it got Midnight Sapphire that's in between both Base Camps, uh, but Tiger Bay is so far away from Base Camp A, it doesn't relatively make sense. I mean, Indeed. Base Camp B has Tiger Bay and Fort Nair. Base Camp C has Midnight, uh, Midnight Sapphire and... It does have uh, Fort Nareth, but it's in the same or same location as Tiger Bay, essentially just on the other side. So you all are forgetting that uh, Base Camp A does have Ban Pa, and looking at it, you can't really see anything except for like kind of like an entrance going out to sea, which is making me suspicious that there is either a bunker or a facility in there because yeah. it's built up a bit. Yeah. So. You can we obviously see it's built up mind. for sure. Uh, it's very as well possible. As Hunter's Paradise, there's also a very good possibility that it might go up into the mountains a bit because it is wedged right up against the mountains. As well as mm -hmm. uh, Base Camp B having YBL, a very uh, possible bunker. Very almost confirmed bunker. What's up, guys? We just had a new join in, Reacher. He's in How's the military. Show your respects. All right, Reacher. Welcome. So, how are we doing? We're pretty far into this, but feel free to give whatever you want. You know, any insight is helpful. We were just speaking about bunkers and YBL, Hunter's Paradise, and Bon Pei, or Bon Pa. I, I like Bon Pei. Sounds cooler, in my opinion. But, um, uh, my thing is, what if all of these are bunkers that lead to ground zero? What are y'all thoughts on that of a, uh, a possibility? I that mean, it might be interesting. Yeah. But they're a bit far, in my opinion. Yeah. But I could see that being a possibility. Two, three hundred kilometers out. Unless maybe there's a network of tunnels that connects it all to Ground Zero, and maybe there's multiple entrance points around the forested and mounted area that you can see around circling Ground Zero, which yeah. is something that would make more sense for gameplay-wise. Maybe there's, I know that there's rumors of like there being bosses inside of some of the bigger POIs. Maybe they plan on adding some kind of, I don't know, Tarkov does this a lot. I hate to use the game as an example, but they do bosses in these kind of hidden secret areas because that's what when you see, think of somebody who's been surviving for a long time out in this kind of environment, they're going to gain a lot of experience and know what works and what won't work. So that would be cool. I love that idea personally. Yeah, that's on 
top of that, we were point. discussing in the Discord, if uh, if you don't care that I get tinfoil a hattie, um, <laughs> we were talking about what Ground Zero <laughs> has to do with the full map and uh, the history of Laos, um, and uh, I, I know I'm going to skip right to the end part, this is going to throw this theory out, the, or throw this theory out there. Uh, what if Ground Zero is the underground bunker, if you want to throw that picture up for everybody? Um, yeah. And literally everything we see is to be built around that facility, which would make a lot of sense. The yeah. whole town yeah. is built around the facility in the center, and it's supposed to be hidden. That's something that. we were discussing, and it was, it was a very interesting idea. The, uh, well, they might have found, we're still talking tinfoil hat stuff, but they might have found a rare mineral, some form of radiation there, and that's the POI, and you're right, it's in it. they've dug it, they've made a bunker into it. Because um, if you notice the health system in some of the gameplay, it's got the intoxication and the radiation. So it's safe to say Ground Zero has something to do with radiation. Oh, that's 100%. a really good point. I didn't even think about that, honestly, because the couple of gameplay videos I've watched, I did notice that in the healing menu because I love to pay attention to like the UI. I know they did say some major UI changes were coming, at least with the traders and stuff that they weren't allowed to show because of the embargo. But yep. It and would be really cool gameplay wise for us to have a workaround for that. Yep. And, just, and just touching on that as well, remember the game, if we go right back to Devlog 1, they're heavily inspired by Stalker and Roadside Picnic. Um, Roadside Picnic's a bit more extraterrestrial, but Stalker is a radiation disaster, so... 100%. That's... Yeah. Yes. Just uh, one other thing to bring up with uh, the surrounding of Ground Zero. Check out this formation here. Doesn't this look like... It could be on top of a mountain or a it's giant hill. Because me being, you know, topography expert, I've done a lot of stuff in the military related to that. I noticed that. That's why I said that hill slash mountain area with all the forest. Because you can see where the yeah. trees are poking everywhere. That definitely is hilly. It's mountainy. It's got some very sharp edges. So I think, do think, plus of all those outer lines, that that's definitely on top of a mountaintop for a yeah. reason. Like maybe you're not supposed to go up on top of it. And it definitely, it gives us draws to think that there's definitely something underground yeah because it wouldn't make sense they would put a facility that important up top of a mountain in my opinion especially with i, I believe it was sure. devlog 3's bunker it's, it's i'd actually be. like i'd like to see him implement that into the map though gradient lines spot heights um uh, you know you can see yeah. it's very undu undulating terrain but yeah i'd love to see those gradient lines and spot height numbers uh, it'd be because the ability be... for topography map yeah, an actual topography map to spot out like good sniper spots that most people wouldn't pay attention to because oh, they don't shit. look into those features. No, no, yeah. no. Everybody's let's even gonna get be the sniping protractor. day one. Let, oh, let's yeah. all get out the bridge tractor and start doing um, <laughs> <laughs> mag grid bearings to mag bearings and it'd be great. Oh, I, I don't want that it that would... realistic. Yeah, that, that point May I might just stick with my M4. Maybe <laughs> yeah. not realistic. Let me know if you guys need my uh, my uh, my windage formula for shooting ranged. <laughs> yeah. nice. We already got zeroing. That's enough for me. <laughs> well, That's what's up. I want to put forth a theory. Go for it. What might be on top of the mountain? Honestly, I think they might have some kind of like. Uh, I know we were talking about aliens before, and I doubt it. This is just a wild theory here. But uh, what if there's like in some kind of like observatory or observation post on top of the mountain? And that's uh, might play a big role in uh, what happened because I could see that happening as well. True, true, definitely. Oh. And also, I want to spin back around here to what is Ground Zero used in terminology? Typically, the striking point of a nuke. So, what if there's a nuclear warhead they recovered? Because what Lamong's based on what country? Vietnam. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Laos. Laos. Yeah. Laos, Laos. Laos. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's in that area of where a lot of Soviets lost nukes because they had many stations there. They were invaded, taken over underground, stuff like that. What if this bandit faction that we're facing has somehow found nukes, maybe leaked radiation out, and it's turned into a ground zero because it's covered in radiation? Yeah. I, I fuck, fuck with that. I 100% I agree. Um, I had did a video a while back and it basically just went into the event and what it is and what it could be just a bunch of speculatory shit but dude 
I really think this whole Ground Zero has something to do with Lamong's turbulent past. I mean, why why do they say turbulent past and give us a background on it if it doesn't partake in it itself? Could it, it could be just a backstory, you know? But I I really feel it has something to do with the Ground Zero portion itself here also, like that nuke you were, you were talking about. I I feel that could be something from the turbulent past. Of the yeah, mom, that you know? sounds very very spot on. I reckon somewhere around that. It's... For all we know. This country could be a former Soviet relic, not relic for the most part, but I, I hate to draw back towards the Soviet point, but that's where a lot of a lot of these nukes end up getting lost is a collapsed regime like the Soviet Republic. So if we look back to that, um, think of the missile silos, think of all the nukes that were lost when the Soviets dismantled and just went to Russia and Ukraine broke off and everyone else. What if Le Mans was a part of that republic and after they broke off, their government capitulated? and it turned into what we see in front of us today. Ooh, and maybe yeah. that's going to be explained through quests and phones that we pick up, notebooks that we can read. You know, I love those. I don't like direct storytelling. I love indirect storytelling. Yeah, yeah it gives, the, gives the players the option to look into it. Like, you wouldn't see much story out of a Tarkov game, but if you look deep, there's a, there's a crap ton. Crap yeah, ton of lore, crap ton of everything. Mm -hmm. With that being said, uh, if you want to tie back into uh, what I was saying a minute ago about the theory of the, it being a facility in the center that was uh, the, literally the whole of Le Mans was uh, built around. Um, if it's a nuclear facility, I mean, uh, think of a nuclear storage facility uh, or a uh, nuclear nuclear weapons uh, engineering facility. Or a huge-ass cache left over from the turbulent past war or however that went down. Yeah. I mean, it could yeah, be. you <laughs> never know. It could be all of them, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting money, though, on it being a bioweapon. Honestly. I, I because... mean, there is radiation suits in that bunker picture that we have. Those so. are red suits. Yeah. I think it's a bioweapon. Sorry, Richard, personally. No, you're good. If it's a bioweapon, that's even more interesting. If we see yeah. Yeah. Nukes Laos, it would be more under Chinese influence, not Russian influence. Yeah. But I see what you're saying, but I have a, more of a theory that maybe... Uh, I think it's more bioweapons, honestly. Or something like that, because there are certain stuff that has been developed in those countries. They haven't really dabbled in nuclear but more so in uh, diseases and stuff, because they can spread those and propagate those very easily in the Southeast Asia environment. Ooh, so that's what I'm What about a dirty bomb? A, a nuclear be. chemical bomb? Could be, could that, be. That's definitely been experimented with in Chinese in the past. It means, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. If they used a country like Le Mans to uh, use that as a testing site. And, and that lines up. up and uh, wait. Let's circle back here. They built up an entire community around it to hide it. They built yeah, a community that, around a mountain to hide it. That was that, that was their plan. Definitely lines up with yeah. that UI we were talking about with intoxication and radiation. I mean, toxicology and toxinology. It could be organophosphates mixed in with the radiation. It could be, yeah. That that's that's actually a really good theory. Yeah, okay. Dirty bombs not meant to, for destruction. It's meant for uh, uh, it's meant for catastrophe after the bomb goes off. It's meant to yep. spread. Yes. So let's let's lead up with that being like the most case scenario because I I think we're pretty on point right now with that with the UI and everything and why that's how that could be implemented and be the case scenario for the Ground Zero. But why? R Rick's just gonna comment on this and just say you're wrong. <laughs> like, <"Damn it." laughs> and then he then he comments under that it's aliens or no Mara yeah. jumps in with the video. A video link it's, it's aliens the <laughs> the it's gonna be a, a uh, alien blaster oh. sitting on the ground inside the bunker oh, man. <laughs> That's gonna be some, clear. some fallout vibes yeah i oh know God. this is very out there uh but what if it is a combination of aliens but it's uh basically the researchers of le Mang having received maybe a code that they received from their observation post or something on top of the mountain. Yeah, true. Well, and you can't rule out that stuff to try and create something. 
Yeah, you can't rule out aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Being inspired by Roadside Picnic, um, you know, it's got aliens in it, so we can't rule it out. I probably wouldn't play it if it had aliens. And then you see Mara uh, (laughs) going back to the drawing board. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think I'll have aliens per se. It's dinosaurs right now. Oh, (laughs) Jesus. I remember when the Discord was just full of dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. Man, I'd rather it be full of Timmy the Turtles than anything else. Yeah, yeah hear me out, because I, I kind of have a theory since we're getting out there with our theories now. All right, all right. What if it's some kind of radioactive experiment with humans to try mm-hmm. enhancing abilities? Because you know the Chinese love to do these out-of-the-world experiments. Yeah. And it's gone bad. And it's, yeah. it's under underground. Uh, the lab has just gone bad, and it got torn to shreds. And whatever they were testing on, whether it be an animal... Where a human has they tried to blow it abilities. up or something yeah and then it, it formed into ground zero because they dropped a nuke on yeah i fuck with that <laughs> that would yeah, be a I cool would. interesting story because um, you would with that theory line you wouldn't have to incorporate that creature into the gameplay because they nuked it yeah if they hit it like that all they have to do is yeah. just leave the fallout leave the story you know put some really good high quality equipment inside of there some sellables that you're not going to find anywhere inside of among besides in there because it's a research facility with the state of the art. I could see that, yeah. That would exactly. line up with Devil Dog saying something about a dinosaur. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we're back to the dinosaurs, aren't we? <laughs> they, were, they were trying to bring back dinosaurs on an island. Oh, is this Jurassic Park or something? <laughs> You know, and people in high up places, um, they have wind of that, and that's why they're sending PMCs in to investigate and try recover because maybe you know they found the formula to enhancing human soldiers or or something like that. So, oh, you get your hands yeah. on it. and you're you're because tasked to recover, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. what was that, Richard? I guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean. We could only speculate so much, right? Until uh, Rick gives us the answers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the speculation's fun, right? Like, like, this is kind of turned into a bit of a community podcast. Like, I'd, I'd be yeah. watching this back and thinking, hey, this is cool. I'm getting some, like, cool stories behind. Like, I like this. It's oh, good. Yeah. It's like a podcast. For sure, for sure. Just not completely live yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not yet, not yet. All right. I think I have a theory on what... Ban paw might be. And it's it's a not chance. aliens, okay? It's not a flying no, saucer. No. <laughs> we confirmed it's dinosaurs. If you look it's over dinosaur. there, by the ocean, this kind of looks like He's a skull. Point out what I pointed out. He's no, it looks point out like a submarine out. pen. It, it looks like there's a submarine pen. Yes, there's there. some kind of cave in the water. Yeah, I can that tell is, from the that looks like it's a man-made. submarine pen. Yes. That looks yeah. like a submarine pen, and. That would back up the conclusion that maybe the Chinese are trying to smoke stuff in to research or do something like that. Because that would make because sense. If a there's a cave connecting it, it'll send it right underground where it'll never be seen by the public and right yeah. into the lab, a research facility. And then they have an observation tower on the top of the mountain watching over to see if anybody's approaching the observation tower because they have an upside, they have a topside door or hatch or something. I Yeah. There's so many ways this can go, and all I can say is I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love the behind it. Yeah. Yes. True, true, true. And this... it, it makes sense because Tiger Bay is a massive port, so no one would think about a ship coming in and going inside of a military cave. No one would draw attention to that. Oh, they're just moving supplies. Especially if they do something with submarines because they're in the past submarines have been known to transport nuclear materials and other stuff that is sensitive like that in the night they've done that very successfully i mean uh recently china started to create uh their new submarine pen so i wouldn't be surprised uh if that is a submarine pen or something like along those lines i mean i've seen yeah. stranger shit i've been in uh i'm, I'm not gonna say the city uh but i've been in colorado and watched an ac-130 literally fly out, fly out out of the side of a mountain and man you want to talk about scaring the hell out of me oh well that makes sense <laughs> you want to zoom out a little bit tactical because if you yeah. look about the pois if we're, if we're going on this submarine theory look on the right side of the map what do you see not a Oh, wait. No, yeah. no. On top right, of it, yeah. right. You see an airfield. <laughs> you see an airfield right there. There's yeah. a quarry right next to it. I'm pretty sure that's what Midnight Sapphire is. 
yeah. it looks like some kind of quarry or underground. There's water there and running within a river. So if you think about this, I'm thinking the top right is where they had their main part of their military operations because then you look to over towards Tiger Bay, they've got a port. So it makes sense that this is where 90% of like the military was focused and they had another fort off to um, the Southwest. It, it kind of seems that this fort's just thrown in there because maybe if you look where that big black mark is right in the bottom right of your screen, there's a cliff face there with a hidden door. It's something I noticed about the first part of the map is this fort is just placed here. Yeah. And I know I've got a good idea that these devs aren't just, they built this map from scratch. Everything's got a purpose. Every piece of mountain, every piece of cliff, everything's got a purpose. And there's I mean, another. It looks like a man-made lake to me, honestly. Yeah, I'm I, sorry, but, but that looks, looks like more a like a man-made lake. It really does look like a shadow to me because you see where the cliff is. Yeah. There's a cliff face right there. It really does look like a shadow, which makes me think that there's something, some kind of interest, the entrance there. I, I don't know. It could be a vault right there for all we know. I don't think that's it's a cliff just... face. I think that's uh, yeah. Like a, a sorry, yeah. Yeah, it be. looks more like a man-made lake would would make sense because uh usually military these military installations have man-made lakes near them mm -hmm. there's only one way but to yeah. find out yeah. like rick top plug <laughs> we need to know the info <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i i don't know it's i mean you could obviously see that that uh the higher up you go we already know this is more than likely a mountainous hill the more higher you go you're obviously gonna get cliffs and whatnot unless it's just rolling hills but uh however creature speaking on that there is a pretty interesting uh lake that's kind of a higher up lake uh just to the right of ground zero and between bind paw and ground zero that actually kind of looks interesting yeah that's pretty out in the open right here it does it's Especially with how it is uh, very shadowed. It's almost, it kind of looks like an opening into the ground to me, just a bit. Sorry. It does, because you see all the shadows on the edges of the lake that usually represent some kind of cliff face, some kind of quarry, something like that, because the way light yeah. is captured. It, I do see it. It looks like it goes into the ground somewhat and it feeds because it's not like all those spots are connected. You can see over to the right at the edge of that mountain. That's not connected to that main face, but it's still the same color water, so it's still being fed by the same source of yeah. water. That's a very, very good observation. The yeah, uh, a little bit darker water up here than here. Yeah, because if you Man. take a look at all the other water, there's really no water that kind of has that uh, dating, is the best way to say it. Yeah. Uh, even Around up at it. This is Midnight Sapphire. Same there's nothing like that so i'm a, uh, i do agree with the uh, creature about that one i'll check the shading later with my colorzilla on my web browser just to see the same shade or not it's kind of difficult to tell if it's not side by side I'm not looks sure. like the same shade yeah we'll see but i am very curious about that and why there's why is it Dude, it looks like it is a cliff face portion all around. It's It looks like it's a hole dug in the side of a mountain. <laughs> it's what it really looks like. Because if you look further over, it looks like the mountain, like, it's start right there at the edge. I can't tell, quite tell if that's either a cliff face or just some, like, flat plane right there. But it looks, from my eyesight, like a very sharp edge. Like, it's just water at the very top, which is very unique. Yeah. Usually, it never happens in nature because water loves to go down. Yeah. But you look south of Ground Zero as well. There's a small little yeah, lake. Yeah, there's there. as well. yeah. But like I did my jungle survival training in Malaysia, um, very similar um, topography. And, you know, years of monsoonal, millions of years of monsoonal rain and that, like these cavities, lakes form. So uh, yeah. like the cliff faces would erode away and um, it's really hard to tell. I think judging by gameplay footage, not looking at the map, they really did stay true to Southeast Asia. Like, um, obviously, I spent a lot of time there with the army, and it was um, really spot on. I would like to see if, um, when the map does release, if it's going to be the full island that we can see. I would really like to see that. That would be interesting. Because mm. this, just with how small this is, 
really makes it seem like the Highlands like five times as big. Well, we run off one kilometer grid squares. What? What? I guess you just do one mile. Is, is that what they're supposed to be so, depicting there? I right have now, no idea. it looks like the grid squares are one by one miles. Uh, yeah. Actually, put that into kilometers. That is uh, about twenty-three by thirty-eight uh, kilometers. Yeah, it's right. So thing. that wouldn't. So it's definitely not the full map we're seeing then. No, it's not the full I, map. I did say that this could be an older version of the map. Oh no! I mean, yeah, I know. One hundred percent agree. I was under the assumption this was uh, uh, kilometer squares, though. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that uh, it's a bit big. It's a bit big for kilometer squared. Because we we did the math on it earlier on kilometer squares, and we got like 117 kilometers on the map if you were to look square by square. I believe me and Tactical sat in the VC and did that together. Oh, really? Um, yeah. See, yeah. then we, we also don't know if it's to scale. Like, we, it, they yeah. might say it's 42 square kilometers, but yeah, like you said, those grid lines are showing 100 and whatever you worked it out to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we did this in Discord though. Um, so if you take from, uh, yeah, keep it right there. Uh, so base camp C, base camp A. If you take for, literally from uh, base camp C to base camp A and the squares that run below them, um, uh, I'm not including the squares that they're technically still in, uh, all the way across, all the way down to just above base camp B, we did all of those squares and it came out to 48 squares. Uh, and then if you, technically take away from the water that's on the coast and the mountains that are also uh, touching or in, in those squares that you wouldn't be able to traverse right above uh, base camp B we would also kind of see where if it is kilometers how it would still be 42 kilometers squared because base camp C is only going to run from uh, uh, line 17 13 all the way down to uh, 11 13 the questionable squares. Yeah. Oh, what I had to point mean? this out. Uh, if you ain't noticed. If uh, zoom in on line 13, um, you'll notice a difference in quality between uh, uh, 13 and 12. There's a barrier. Uh, there, there, there's a quality barrier on the map. It's very hard to notice unless you have it in 4K. Yeah, I can't really notice it too too much. Yeah, uh, I can't see it. You're saying twelve is better? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, no. Ed, thir thirteen is better than twelve. Oh yeah. So are you are you alluding to? Uh, un it. Yeah. So are you alluding to like unplayable from thirteen down? Uh, like, yeah. Like oh, outside no, like the map. The yeah. Uh, not not that, not that thirteen. Uh, latitude thirteen. Latitude thirteen. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I mean. Oh. Uh, so like if you, so uh, the field right there versus the trees to the left of it you can you can uh and, and it's a lot more noticeable in 4k but yeah. you can already tell there's a small difference between the trees above that field at the top square uh, yeah yeah no no i the see trees to the left i see just and it's a little bit more noticeable in 4k you can see the edge of the maps is basically what yeah. you're saying yeah yeah. They, so that, yeah so basically this is roughly the edge following this is what it seems like it could be yeah makes sense i mean that looks those those features look way too high to be stomping through anyway so it's probably unplayable ground but confused. i want to snipe from there man <laughs> <laughs> look port nareth is right here i could be up on this hill <laughs> i just died from four miles away what do you mean yeah. <laughs> man, man had a 50 times scope on his m700 what is this yeah. <laughs> jesus you know what? Uh, also, something I want to point out. Yeah. If we're believing that's the unplayable area, look to the left of the sawmill and how empty that area is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just concerning to me because obviously you can walk over there. The topography is not impassable. You, you can definitely hike that. You didn't yeah, know yeah, why? I want to go into this another is... theory. Go for it. Uh, we were also talking about since this might be an old, outdated version of the map, where are they putting the factionless or the uh, rogue camp? You're right. Because yeah. they did talk about being able to join them closer to the full yeah, version. If you go, um, like, if you go against your faction and kill too many of your own PMCs and stuff like that, you can eventually get a bad reputation and be forced out. 
We're gonna so have a schedule for part two, two, guys. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck! I didn't think y'all would be this good at insights. God damn! Putting me out All of right. business. I do. I'm gonna dude, have to cut this out. <laughs> anything you want to know about Grey's on Warfare? You hit me up. We've already talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Kusho. He knows. But uh, you you know what this area is for, right? You know Dinosaurs. the the sea. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to see the scene from Jurassic Park in open field. No, I'm <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> They're gonna get to the show. No, no, no. I wasn't gonna say that. This is. I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, so this is another scenery portion I want to do. Of all the footage that we have so far, where is it based on the map? The scene where you fly over, not in the helicopter, and you have the overview. I'm pretty sure that somewhere's around here. And I'd like to really go back and look on that footage and try and guesstimate where it's at. Even though the footage is freaking hella old and probably not even on this build of the map, you know. I know what you're talking about. I it's been a while. On that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we think that helicopters taking off from base camp B, and if you see the cliffs to the right of it, we think that helicopters going to Tiger Bay to one of the LZs that's unknown. Yeah. Yeah, because uh the uh if you go to latitude eighteen in between air eight, latitude eighteen and nineteen, the second square up. That's that's the Right here? Down two. Down two. Down two? The mountain. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's the valley. That's the mountain that yeah. we think that video yep. came from. Yep. Oh, I agree we, with we that. think we, we think the helicopter was flying to uh the what is the city called? Jesus Christ, Spring Park. Scroll out. I don't Man, see Jesus Christ, Christ in here. <laughs> yeah. I, I just see a bunch of gray zone wanna playing motherfuckers. <laughs> Give me a little man. <laughs> Which this is, is a uh, a bit off topic from the map, but what was everybody's thoughts on the helicopter controlled AI and people shooting at the helicopter with you having no way to really do any evasive maneuvers in a helicopter? So I'm not sure if y'all know about it, but uh, the video I had watched, Rick stated that you will bleed, but you can't bleed out and fall out of the helicopter. Ah, copy. So, so that that is if... a smart move, 100% smart. You you can throw grenades, you can shoot, and I'm pretty sure you're able to heal. Probably not all heals, but I'm sure you could at least bandage or wrap some toilet paper around the wound. If you can bleed but on the helicopter, what happens if you're literally left on one blood when you it, land, and then it, as soon as you get on boots on ground, you just die? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure you just die. Well, if you're if you're at one blood at that point, you're already passed out. Because yeah. There's a certain point to where you pass out, and then to the point where you where you bleed out and you're dead. But dead there would there would be up. the animation of your character getting off the helicopter though. Yeah. That's that's. It, it it doesn't happen until you would get there though, for sure. Yeah. Is what I understood from Rick. Now, did I misunderstand? I don't think I did, but I didn't jot down notes. I just took it ear for ear, and I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. You know. In other words, don't play solo, because then if you get shot, yeah. you get off the drop, and no one's there to fucking get you up. Yeah, they're just there to get your shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another thing. How's that gonna play? You know, since we're a little off topic now. Fuck. Yeah, Thanks, sorry, Jimmy. sorry. I'm like, yeah, sorry. I'll you had to bring up dinosaurs now, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just, it's so hard to not talk about it. So I'm going to label this dinosaur. I mean, uh, not dinosaurs. Fuck. Map <laughs> slash dinosaurs <laughs> slash other BS to give grades on warfare. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I love the name, but it's not searchable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I might have it's to get with you for optimized. that so I could get some uh, 200k views, man. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, since, yeah. since you cut in this part of the video, you should upload it to my channel. Call it, call it <laughs> yeah. no, I ain't cutting shit. <laughs> not even when Reacher joined and I was like, yeah, add that dude here. <laughs> Straight raw. We going in raw, dog. <laughs> Kusha's like, yeah, you gotta wait. And I just get pulled in while I'm watching Fat Electrician. <laughs> I'm about to say, tackle knows how I like it. Yeah. I mean, speaking about dinosaurs, how do they make babies with them long tails? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Missionary style. Yeah. Okay, cue the Rick roll. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, I mean, I'm pretty sure we touched basically on everything except, I mean, like, obviously this road leads to nowhere, but a uh, point of interest that has yet to be determined, I believe. Very dense forest. That yeah. The densest forest I've seen. Yeah. I know I'm slow on this, but I. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and there <laughs> goes the YouTube me. channel. Yeah, Rip. don't get him a copyright. No. Cut, cut, cut that out, cut that out, cut that out. What was that? <laughs> My ears. Your mating call? I mean, jeez. <laughs> Let's get Actually a round of applause for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, I just had a few short questions to base on. Um, do you feel the map? is in a good state if it stays like this not with the replication mm. of villages <laughs> but yeah no, not right i know now. they're not going to keep it like that which uh, one thing i do want to say is if there's not small collections of villages and lootables along the way it's going to be very repetitive i know yeah. the ai pathing changes and stuff like that but if there's not small collections of we'd call them mini POIs where they don't have a name. They're not really marked on the map. All you see is a building and it's just a collection of three or four guys sitting around a campfire eating food at night or something like that. If there's not little checkpoints across the roads and stuff like that, I do think this game is going to hit a wall. I'm not calling down. I'm not downgrading the developers here at all anyway, but it's a mistake I see a lot in potential games that come out where you see a map and it's like, well, that's it. It's just the marked locations. They are put pretty close together, but some variety would be nice. Some side quests yeah. that don't really point you in the right direction, and maybe you have to go northwest of, of Nam Nam Thaven to a hut in the middle of the woods, and that's all you're given is a direct yeah. where it's just there's no POI, there's no marking, and it has a really good reward. But then you either have to go to a forum that somebody's already completed it, or you got to literally like look at your map and walk through the woods aimlessly till you see something, which is something I'd, I love. I'd like that. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. Because that's realistic. It's because all you get is a direction in these kind of operations. And Which... that's what he did allude to as well. He said that they're not going to give you the direct location. Like you have to go explore and find stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we already know there's going to be additions of POIs. But uh, just to touch base on basically what you just said the, um, the playability and the repetitiveness. So for replayability and to be less repetitive, let's say basically like what Rick had alluded to, the, the game wiping pretty much every six months. Say you pick one faction and you stay with that faction. The factions are going to rotate. So you're going to rotate bases, right? You might be at base camp yeah. A, now you're at totally base camp C. About that. The replayability, uh, actually, dude, if this these towns are staying the same, the replayability will be ass. Oh yeah, 100%. I, I, I do not like seeing this. It, it, it really sucks. Now that this could be just like, oh, hey, we don't have another town built yet, you know, which cool, whatever. Trying to get a play test put together and find out bugs. Yeah, issues, yeah. Like yeah. the AMD issue that he had. Mm. Right here. I think the towns will actually be the same for the first six months, honestly. For, the for first balance. three towns you see. Yeah. Uh, for balance and to get people used to the game. But there, there's these also... These seem like a bit of like starter kind of... Uh, how do you say this? Like beginner areas, kind of, to get everyone kind of used to the mechanics. Yeah. So I can understand where they want to have... A the town. same the same that's kind of like the same for everyone that i hey you uh, this is a town that everyone gets access to that they can pick off up from where they left off when the new wipe comes or something like that and they have relatively familiar with it i understand the copy paste for a few months but i really hope they listen to the community and i'm on the standpoint of we need something different because if you look no. at if you look yeah, at the totally six months free. wipe, this game has a replayability of three uh not three years, a year and a half. Where if you play every day, you can't see everything from every perspective. Because you have not played as base camp C, you have not played as base camp A, you have not played as base base camp or well maybe you did, you know, on that wipe, if you get what I'm saying. 
unless you make mo more than one character, which we still don't know that's not confirmed yet where you could be multiple yeah. factions, which I'm sure you can, because that'd be kind of crazy. It would be even more like Tarkov. Who the hell wants to be more like Tarkov? Where, uh, if you, I'm you would need... i the gun system is not ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> you would need more than one account to play as another faction. You know, that's just insane. Also, an issue that we're going to run into is if you're faction locked, what if you join a server that's got 18 players and all 18 players are sitting in your faction? Yeah, that too. Server. Like, okay, I didn't know if they were selection servers or not. I haven't looked into the server system. No, no, it's work. Ra ra random. random. Versus, uh, okay. Yeah, th that's the current information that we currently have. Uh, it's, that's, that's even better. One They're... thing, though, uh, back to the POIs. Okay. Giving you long pause easier to cut because you might be cutting this. Um, this is something Rick, straight from his mouth, tactical, you're the only one there. Uh, it was, did we get confirmation on rotating, or uh, not rotating, uh, di dynamic POIs? No, not from my recollection. He alluded but... to it. Yeah. Interesting. I could see that. Okay, so say that. So, uh, the possibilities of uh, dynamic uh, POIs being in the game every wipe is going to be interesting as well. Uh, more POIs, definitely. We're, we're definitely going to see it, but uh, POIs changing over a wipe, is, it, I don't think it's going to be that much of uh, an issue when it comes to repetitiveness, or repetitiveness from wipe to wipe. Maybe while you're playing the game after uh, some of us, like me especially, I'm going to know life the game uh, for six months straight, but after that six months uh and they have a white and the pos change it's going to be a completely different or different game that's how yeah. they could save the replayability part of it because if they're doing that where events are taking place or i don't know what if ground zero is a mind wiping facility let's just go here how do you incorporate a wipe and more yeah. wipe everyone's memory and reset it kind of like i don't know uh what's that what's that movie uh every single time he dies it resets time back to the beginning of the day imagine that there's a few of them yeah there, there's a few of them but one of them i used to watch but every single time every Grand single Hogs time day. he dies Groundhog's day yeah every single time he dies it wipes it he has to find a way to work around it and what if that happens what if at the end of that six months or maybe it can be triggered earlier through a lore i'm just i'm brainstorming here this would be yeah. a cool idea they get to that final objective they disable whatever is causing this issue and it wipes everything back to the beginning but everything's changed slightly everything's altered Buildings yeah. are in different places. There's a different new enemy type wearing a new type of armor and clothing. It would that be a cool concept. Yeah, I yeah. like that concept a lot. It would make because it sense. doesn't have to be fighting aliens and shooting things with black legs and stuff like that. Well, it's I don't just, think it's gonna be fighting aliens. I was thinking I don't think more it is <laughs> on the level of they received something from the aliens, like in uh, roadside picnic, like maybe a transmission on how to create something and they messed up while trying to create that that's what i'm kind of thinking a bit a little stargate. bit yeah stargate <laughs> dude if i see a fucking portal i swear to god no i hope not no Ooh, portals please if i see a portal gun i swear to god <laughs> Now, I, I, i'm not gonna lie it would be a cool aspect to have something like a portal and then i mean you gotta find all the parts, of course, you know, to put it back together, right? Because there was a humongous explosion at Ground Zero that pushed everything or whatever threw it everywhere. And then when you get this portal back online, dinosaurs walk through. No. <laughs> back to di I'm done. <laughs> That's enough for me. <laughs> I love dinosaurs. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Go play Dude, I... <laughs> I'm just happy to be here early with Madfinger Games because I could just see it. They're going to make a game directly in the jungle based with dinosaurs, and we're all going to better play it. I just know it. I see it coming. I'm going to talk to Rick. I mean, did you not hear the rumor about them joining with Ark? With Ark? I was about to say, is this not Ark 2? I thought this was Ark 2. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> name, name changes in the works and everything. The Grey Zone Ark. It's crazy. Dude. <laughs> if Imagine I see a zone, fucking obelisk, zone. if I spawn at base camp B, C, and A, and those are obelisks, bro. No, it's this the no, Bunparasaurus the <laughs> and the Namthavanosaurus. 
Nom tapes on. <laughs> Real quick, can we all just appreciate what Timmy just said because on it, it, on a smarter scale for the uh, smarter person, the name the Gray Zone Arc is perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it, yeah. It's so much better than Arc Two, and then basically just being Arc Ascendant or whatever the fuck it is now. Like what? <laughs> I have that game. I don't know why I have that game. I don't remember buying it, but it's sitting in my Steam library. It, it was I'm fun, so bro. On Xbox, it was so fun whenever it first came out. When you just waited for months to get into a gra- the game, you know, because you were in queue. It was so fun. <laughs> no, dude, I, I, I spent like is. I spent way too many hours fucking taming paradons and all that shit. <laughs> Holy crap! Got all the good old PT. Yeah. Right now we're up. definitely well off topic. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're not right we're talking about anymore. <laughs> and this is where the viewers tank. AVD has gone down. Cut this out. Cut this out. Cut this out. <laughs> hey, I don't have to edit this video. It's not my problem. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Jesus. But, uh, how long have you guys have... been in here doing this? How's that, Reach? <laughs> how, how long have you guys been in here doing this? Two hours. No, I'm sure. Oh, my God. In, an hour, 20 minutes almost. But uh, I'm saying I'm, that they're probably gonna bounce out. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we touched on everything, bro. So uh, I appreciate Except y'all being here. So, uh, no, 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 we touched on Ground Zero. Yeah, <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk about Ground Zero here. Let me get my theories back out. Let me get my notebook. Yeah, more theories. We're gonna theory. say that for last, and me throwing a theory out there straight to the last subject. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, no, I, we touched on everything, bro. But uh, what do you thought, Timmy? Uh. You noticed anything uh, that we didn't uh, to come be, into? No, no. To be honest, I think we covered not only a wide range of aspects about the map, but um, I think we touched on a lot of the lore and um, possibilities and theories. So I, I enjoyed this. I think it was very beneficial. Um, I think the viewers are going to enjoy a good yarn about some potential theories. Um, like I said, I think this felt very podcasty, which I loved. I think For this is sure. something I could sit down and watch an hour of listening to a group of creators talk shit. I think I had fun. <laughs> I don't know about you, but thank I, you. I, I hope thank you for the invite. Up. For sure, dude. I, I appreciate you joining. At first, I was no like, ah, oh, man, maybe I could ask him. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just ask him because I'm looking for at least five people. And uh, not everybody could show up right away. And I definitely wanted to get this out night and done so i can Man, edit in the morning i love this community i love this game so i appreciate whenever i get invites to anything so um for sure it's dude. just good to sit down and talk about the game and especially meet other people so pleasure to meet all you guys you do, for sure well guys i guess that's it you have met the cast of the new now podcasting with dinosaurs and aliens crew with Warzone <laughs> warfare we'll 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 see you next time yeah, stay, use my line. Stay tactical. Oh, yeah, stay, stay tactic cool. <laughs> love it. Enjoy, love gentlemen. It, Much love from Australia. Peace. Later. Peace.